Section 2.8, Problem Solving with Units. This is just uh, another section on converting. So we're just going to get some more practice with converting and also see some converting from uh, metric to the U.S. Uh, measurement system and vice versa. So let's start off with the first one. Suppose you bought 10 six-packs of soda, each six-pack containing six 12-ounce cans. How many gallons of soda did you buy? So I don't know this is a particularly useful conversion, but it does give us practice at kind of a long conversion. So I want to show you how it works. So we have 10 six packs. That's what we started off with and we want to end up with gallons. So 10 six packs, got to get the six packs to go away. So in one six pack, there are six cans. That's kind of almost a silly conversion, but it is one you have to make. You might even just do it mentally that, that uh, 10 six packs would be 60 cans, but this shows you how it would work in terms of making the units cancel. Then you want to get rid of the cans, and it calls them 12 ounce cans. So in every one can, there are 12 ounces. That gets the cans to cancel. And now we have to make it somehow from ounces to gallons. So you need some conversion factors to get you there. One of the ones that's not real common, but I think it's a useful one to know, would be to go um, from ounces to quarts. So there are 32 ounces in one quart. So if you don't memorize that, then you have to go through like cups and pints and all that sort of stuff. And that, that can be kind of a messy process. So I would recommend adding this to what you have memorized, that there's 32 ounces in a quart. And then it's called a quart for a reason, because it's a quarter gallon. So if I put a quart down here and gallons up here, then it's a quarter gallon, so there's, or a fourth of a gallon, so it takes four quarts to make one gallon. And I can cancel off the quarts. And my units that left over would be gallons. It's just a process of, or, uh, yeah, just a process of figuring out how many now it would be to enter it into your calculator. Start on the left and just go left to right. So 10 times 6, you don't need to do the over 1, it wouldn't change anything. Times 12, times 1 over 32. If you don't put the 1 here, you're forgetting to divide, so that's important. And then times 1 fourth, and that should be the conversion to gallons. They didn't tell us what to round it to, and it's actually exact at 3 decimals, so I'm just going to get rid of that approximately equal. Go with a regular equal sign. 5.625 gallons. So one, two, three, four different conversion factors, but really just, they call this section the problem solving with units because I'm really focusing on the units. I want six packs to cancel. I want cans to cancel. I want ounces to cancel. I want quarts to cancel. And just always making sure I set up these numbers by thinking about where the units go first and then filling in the number second and paying attention to, I want the units to cancel and I want to move closer and closer to gallons. All right, let's look at another type of conversion in here, which is going from metric to US measurement. So convert 160 centimeters to inches. 160 centimeters might be the length of a snowboard. So 160 centimeters over one. We want centimeters out, and we want inches to replace it. So that's the way we'd set up the units, so that centimeters would cancel. The thing is, do we know how many inches are in a centimeter, or vice versa? Uh, you might, but then again, you might not. So if you look on the next page of your notes, we have a chart that has some of those conversion factors for us. So we're trying to go from inches to centimeters, and or centimeters to inches, actually. So there's two conversions that we could choose from. We have one inch equals 2.540 centimeters, or one centimeter equals 0 0.397 inches. Just like the conversion we did earlier with money, you can do that in either order. And I personally, when I have the choice, like to put a one in the bottom. So when I say I'm gonna put one centimeter, that means I'm choosing this conversion factor right here. So one centimeter equals 0 0.3937 inches. 
So that's probably not something you're going to have memorized, but you have this chart to help you through that. And I would give you conversion factors like this on a test situation, so don't feel like you need to have these memorized. All right, so from there, the centimeters would cancel, and we can go ahead and do the multiplication. It says to round to three decimal places, so if we're going to round, I'll put my approximately equal sign in there. And then let's see what we get. 160 times 0 0.3937. And they got me again. There's only three decimal places, so we're not actually rounding. We're getting an exact answer, so I can put a regular equal sign. 62.992 inches. And I said earlier, uh, maybe this would be a snowboard. It might also be somebody's height. 160 centimeters tall, and that would mean 63 inches roughly, which would be five foot three. So that's a conversion you could do to get a height or a length from one system to the other. Let's try another one. 120 kilometers per hour to miles per hour. So if you're driving somewhere other than the US, it's very likely the speed would be in kilometers per hour. And when you see that speed limit of 120, you might think, woohoo, right? Like I can floor this thing. But if it's 120 kilometers per hour, it's maybe not as fast as you think. So we want to do the conversion, 120 kilometers per hour means that the hours are in the bottom. Now we're not trying to get rid of the hours. There were hours in the beginning, there's going to be hours at the end. So our focus is on getting rid of the kilometers. So kilometers in the top, I'll put kilometers in the bottom and switching that to miles. Again, probably we don't know how many miles are in a kilometer or vice versa. I know that table gives it to me both ways, so I'm going to put one kilometer and figure out how many miles that is by looking at the chart. So we bring in the chart. We have one kilometer equals 0.6214 miles. We also have the one mile is 1.6093 kilometers, but I'm going to use this side of it because I put one kilometer. So one kilometer equals 0.62 one four miles the kilometers would cancel and bring the calculator in to do the multiplication so 120 times 0 0.6214 is 74.568 but this time they said to round to one decimal place so 74 point it's a five but followed by a six so round up 74.6 miles per hour so we have miles per hour like that or you can write 74.6 MPH, which is also miles per hour. Either of those would be okay. There we go. So on all these problems, we're using these conversions. Anytime you're doing a conversion from metric to US, I would either allow you to use this very chart, or I would give you the conversion you need. So don't worry about memorizing these. On the top of this page of conversions, there's a lot of stuff that you are supposed to have memorized. And we were trying to go from ounces to gallons before. If you're trying to do that from this chart, um, you probably would do 16 ounces as a pint and then two pints as a quart. You might want to add to what you have memorized that idea that one quart equals 32 ounces because that did speed us up a little bit. So if you add that to your page there of things to memorize that would be useful and then you also have to have some metric facts memorized they give you a pretty big chart here I would argue these three are the ones that are commonly used in the metric system so if you know these three you're good and one thing that's nice about the metric system is those conversions are the same for all different sorts of things so you just need to know what this means milla is small and it means a thousandth so there's 1,000 milligrams in a gram, but there's also 1,000 milliliters in a liter, right? So 1,000 uh, millimeters in a meter. So that kind of 1,000 idea carries whether it's grams or liters or meters, all those different things that'll work. Centa, I think century, there's 100 centigrams in one gram or 100 milligrams, or sorry, 100 uh, centimeters in a meter and 100 centiliters and a liter and so on. The kilo is a big thing, so it takes a lot of the smaller ones to make one of those. A thousand grams is a kilogram, a thousand meters is a, a kilometer. Uh, what's the other one we're doing there? A thousand, 
liters would be a kiloliter. I have never really heard people talk about kiloliters, but maybe in the U.S. or outside the U.S. they do. So don't worry about memorizing the whole chart. You want to know those three words. If you can remember this one example, that carries over to the other types of measurements as well. Okay, a couple more conversions to finish off this section. Gasoline at a Belgian gas station costs 1.40 euros per liter. What is the price in dollars per gallon? Definitely be pretty confusing when you're outside of the U.S. and you're thinking about the price of gas because not only do they have a different type of money they're using, but then they're measuring it per liter instead of per gallon. So, I mean, that looks cheap. If that was dollars per gallon, that would be an expensive gas price, but is it really? So let's try and convert that. 1.40 euros per liter, so over one liter. And this time we want to get rid of both the euros that are in the top and the liters that are in the bottom. And you can do it in either order, but you cannot do both at the same time. So I'm going to handle the money first. I'm going to try and get rid of the euros and switch it to dollars. And I know from our currency chart before I have a choice of whether I put a one in the top or the bottom, and I like a one in the bottom. So I want to know one euro equals how many dollars. So I bring in that currency chart from the previous section. And we have one euro equals $1.320. All right, so that'll get the euros to cancel. And now I have dollars per liter, but I don't want it to be liters. I want it to be gallons. So I hope I can go directly from liters to gallons. I'll have to look at the conversions they give us to see, but probably we can do it. And I want the liters up top because these liters were in the bottom and I want them to cancel. I want it to be dollars per or over a gallon. So always think about the units first and then go get the conversions. Let's see if we can find one gallon equals how many liters on that conversion page. So we bring that in and let's see. Do we have gallons on here anywhere? There's a quart, there's a gallon. So one gallon equals 3.785 liters. So we'll use that one right there. One gallon equals 3.785 liters. And now the liters cancel. We've already canceled the euros and now we have dollars per gallon and they said to go dollars per gallon. So now it's just a matter of putting it in the calculator and seeing what it works out to be. 1.40 times 1.320 times 3.785 and we get rounded to the nearest penny six dollars and 99 cents per gallon so so much for that sounding cheap i hope at the time you're watching this video that sounds expensive because it does to me right now and we rounded it to the nearest penny the third decimal place was a four that's why we stuck with the nine round down for four and lower and again just a reminder when you have to convert two types of units euros and the liters you have to just pick one at a time so first i dealt with money with one conversion factor, then I used another conversion factor to deal with the measurement of volume. All right, let's look at one final example. Carpet at a British home supply store sells for 16 pounds, which is the British measure of currency per square meter. What is the price in dollars per square yard? And round it to the nearest cent. So a whole lot going on here. Let's just start off with what they gave us, 16 pounds, which I believe they use kind of a fancy L for that, per square meter. So that's over meters squared. We could put a one there, I suppose. And now we have to get to dollars per square yard, which means we want to change the currency from pound to dollars and the measurement of distance or area actually from square meters to square yards. So. On the last one, I started with the numerator first. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do that again. So I have pounds up top, so I'll put pounds in the bottom. And that's currency, so I want to change it to dollars. I know from our currency chart, I have the option of putting a one in the bottom on all of these, so I'm going to do that. I bring in our currency conversions. Pounds are right up top, and we have one pound is $1.624. Notice I definitely don't have these memorized, so every time I need the money conversions, I go get the chart. And then that'll take care of the pounds and we will be in dollars per square meter, but that's not what we want. So 
we got to make another conversion factor for that. And you won't find one that goes from square meters to square yards, which is what we need. So what you should do is maybe go off to the side. Let's do it kind of down here in the bottom corner. And let's just make a conversion factor that's meters and yards. And go pull that off the chart. I like to have a one in the bottom, so I'll put the one yard down there. Let me find that other sheet and pull it in. So one yard, see if we can find that. One foot, one yard. So there's one yard is 0 0.9144 meters. So we saw this in a previous section, but if you have the conversion from meters to yards and you want meters squared to yards squared, then you have to square everything. So you have to square the numbers, you have to square the units. Okay, now when we square one, we just get one. So we have one yard squared on the bottom, but what do we have on the top? It's 0 0.9144 squared, which is a whole lot of decimal places. 0 0.8361273636. I don't like a round in the middle, so even though that got a little messy and I had to go uphill, I think it's still a good idea to, to put them all for now. And then when we round to the nearest cent, we'll trim it down. But if you round too much too early, it'll throw off your answer. We'll see more about that in chapter three. So let's see, what units did we get rid of right there? We'd already gotten rid of pounds, and now meters squared and meters squared would cancel off. And what units will be left? Dollars over yard squared or dollars per square yard, which is what we want. So always be thinking about the units and are they getting closer to where you're supposed to be. When they finally are at the spot you're supposed to be, you can bring in the calculator and take that 16 times 1.624 times that really messy 8361273636 number. This is dollars, 21.7, it's a two, but followed by a five, so I'll make it a three. And then per square yard, so per square yard. So $21.73 per square yard would be the answer. Just a quick comment, we also had a choice of just kind of taking that conversion factor right there and plugging that in that spot. And that would have looked like this. We would have had the 16 from the beginning times 1.624 times 0 0.9144 and we could have just put a square on there and then that gives us the same thing. So just a different way of handling it. You have to square it either way when you're going from standard measurement to squared units, you have to do that squaring. But you could do it and write it out messy or you could just do it on the calculator and then do your rounding at the end either way is fine. All right, kind of a messy problem there, but uh, that wraps up section 2.8.